Hello, my name is Nicola Tickley and I'm a field application engineer at ST Microelectronics. In this video, I'm going to talk about the digital power controller ST Energy 011. I'll start with the high level features of the ST Energy 011 digital combo PFC and LSC controller. And then I'll describe more in detail what there is inside the ST Energy 011 and why it is an excellent choice for high efficiency power suppliers. In the second part of the presentation, I review the complete evaluation and prototyping ecosystem available from ST Microelectronics. And I'll show you how to use the graphical user interface to configure the numerous controller parameters. ST Energy 011 is a digital combo IC that integrates both PFC and LLC controllers. It combines key features of typical analog controllers like the integration of high voltage startup, integration of the gate drivers for both PFC and half bridge LSE MOSFETs. It doesn't require to write any firmware and it can achieve very low standby power. On the other side, it has key benefits of digital controllers like high level of configurability, numerous fully configurable protections, UART and I2C communication interfaces for remote monitoring and black box recording. Just FYI, ST also offers pure analog and pure digital power controllers, and you can find them going on our website at sd.com. Before I move forward with more details about the ST Energy 011 controller, I want to give you some information about the typical applications for this combo controller. The typical characteristics of the target applications are a power level from 90 to 300 Watt, the presence of a main CPU that will communicate with the ST Energy 011 via I2C or UART, the requirement of meeting stringent energy saving regulations. Based on those characteristics, the typical applications are power adapters for computers and TVs, power adapters for industrial and medical equipment, LED drivers that require connectivity for remote monitoring and control, like street lighting. Now let's go more in detail on what there is inside this device. In the block diagram, you can see the main building blocks of ST Energy 011. On the top right, you can see the built-in high voltage startup circuit that allows this controller to start without the need of any additional housekeeping power supplier. On the top left, you can see the gate drivers for PFC and LLC with one amp peak current for the most demanding of MOSFETs. These two features combined are key to reduce the bomb for the power supplier. Most digital controllers do not have uh, these blocks uh, and require external components to take care of these functions. On the bottom, you can see the 8-bit microcontroller running at 60 MHz with 10-bit high-speed ADC to allow for precise control and monitoring of the digital power supply. The device also integrates a non-volatile memory that stores the numerous configuration parameters. I'll cover this more in detail later. Finally, this device has UART and I2C communication interfaces that allow the configuration of the digital power supply as well as uh, remote monitoring or black box logging. Let's take a look now at the high level functionality of the two logical macro blocks present in the ST Energy 011. The first block is the front end PFC controller that is implemented with the digital PI and two SMEDs. SMED stands for State Machine Event Driven, and it is a ST proprietary IP block that is present in all ST Energy devices. The inputs to this block are the output voltage and the PFC current information coming from the auxiliary winding of the PFC choke. The mode of operation of this PFC is based on ramp-enhanced constant on-time 
which is a modified version of the standard constant on time with a proprietary ST algorithm to compensate for the current caused by the input filter capacitors. This algorithm improves the power factor and the THD. In order to optimize efficiency, the PFC switches from transition mode at high loads to valley skipping at low loads and burst mode at very low loads. In addition, it also implements an optional skipping area mode that essentially stops the switching activity when the input voltage is around the zero crossing. The second macro block in ST Energy 011 is the LLC controller. Here, two SMEDs are utilized to manage the MOSFETs in the half bridge. The LLC controller is based on one more ST proprietary IP called the time shift control. Time shift control provides two major advantages compared to a direct frequency control. First, dynamic load performance is greatly improved. Second, it provides anti-capacitive mode protection. As an option to further increase power supply efficiency, the rectifier diodes on the secondary side can be upgraded to MOSFET-based synchronous rectification, controlled by ST devices SRK2000 or SRK2001. ST provides a fully integrated evaluation platform for testing of ST Energy 011 controller. In particular, we offer a demo board named Eval ST Energy 011 150 with a GUI that allows customers to easily evaluate the controller on a real working solution. This demo board is a complete power supply that includes also synchronous rectification using SRK2001 for optimal efficiency. It delivers 150 watt at 12 volt and it accepts wide range AC voltage from 90 volt to 264 volt. The two major components of the ecosystem are the interface board and the PC graphical user interface. The interface board provides electrical insulation between the PC and the ST Energy 011 board, as well as the ability to utilize the USB port to communicate with the ST Energy 011 via the built in UART. This board also provides the correct voltages and signals to program and read the E square PROM inside the device. The graphical user interface gives easy access to all the parameters of the device and it also provides real-time status of the power supply. The graphical user interface provides control of 85 parameters to tailor the power supply performance to suit the application. These parameters include protection behaviors, filtering, PFC control, LLC control, and burst mode parameters. This graphical user interface and evaluation toolkit can serve as the launchpad for your own high performance digital power supply using ST Energy 011. To close the overview of the ST Energy 011 evaluation board, I want to quickly mention its performance. As you can see in the main table, the efficiency of the board is good across the full range of output power, but the most impressive performance is at low and no load. The no load consumption of 70 milliwatt at 115 volt AC and 93 milliwatt at 230 volt AC is really low and it is very difficult to achieve with any other digital controllers. In order to help anybody who gets this evaluation board, I'm going to show step-by-step -step how to access and modify the configuration parameters of ST Energy 011. Later, I'll also show you a few live examples using the actual GUI, showing the impact of the changes on an oscilloscope. Let's start with the step-by-step -step description. First basic step is to connect the interface board to the PC using the USB cable and to, have to the evaluation board using the six wire ribbon cable present in the kit. Second, you need to make sure that uh, the evaluation board is not connected to the AC line, otherwise uh, you will not be able to proceed. 
Now go to the GUI and click on Enter ATE mode present in the ATE mode menu. After this command, you will see on the interface board a red LED turning on, which means that the interface board is supplying power to the ST Energy device. At this point, we are ready to access the parameters. Click on NVMe operations in the tools menu and then click on read from IC on the NVMe operations window that just opened. Please note that uh, if you don't click on read from IC, the GUI will show you its own default values for each parameters, but they don't have anything to do with the values in the device. Now you can modify any of the parameters of your interest. When you're done with the changes, you need to write the changes by clicking on write to IC. After you do this, the parameters are written into the non-volatile memory and at the next power up, they will be used by the device. In order to do the test with this new configuration, you need to exit ATE mode, which is done by clicking on go run mode in the ATE mode menu present on the main graphical user interface window. Now you can connect the AC line and test the board with the new configuration. As briefly mentioned earlier, I will also show you a few examples of parameter changes and verify with an oscilloscope what is the impact of such changes. The first parameter that I will test is related to a protection. And I will show you the different behavior for latched versus non-latched protection. I selected LLC OLP, that means overload protection, as it is one of the simplest and safest to test. The second parameter that I will test is the burst mode entering threshold, which modifies the power level at which the board will enter in burst mode. The last parameter that I will test is the skip area parameter that defines the power level threshold to apply a power saving technique uh, that stops PFC switching activity when the AC voltage is low. As I mentioned, uh, I'm going to cover uh, uh, a few changes of parameters and uh, verify how this will impact the behavior of the evaluation board. So we're going to start with uh, the latched versus non-latched behavior of the protections. Uh, we'll uh, use the overload protection of the LLC first. As we saw earlier, in order to change any parameters, uh, we first need to enter in uh, ATE mode and then modify the parameter. But uh, the power needs to be disconnected. So the board is now running. I'm switching off the power, the AC line. Then uh, I enter in ATE mode. It is now in ATE mode, I see the uh, VCC for the ST energy and I see the red LED on the interface board. Also the oscilloscope, you see that there is no activity anymore. Second, uh, I go to NVM operations uh, to access the parameters. Here we can see the LLC OLP behavior. That is the parameter that we're going to change. Let's start with uh, the non-latched mode of this uh, protection. So I changed it, uh, I click OK to make it effective, and then uh, I write the parameter into the non-volatile memory. It asks if I'm sure to write this parameter, and I say yes. The device is now updated. Uh, and uh, I can uh, close uh, the parameter window and I can go back uh, into normal mode of operation. So with go run mode. I can now give back power to the board and I can see that uh, it starts working at uh, 80 watt. I now increase uh, the power consumption, the load, and uh, I 
exceed uh, basically the maximum for the protection. When this happens, as you see, the boat stops. But after some seconds, you can see the activity on the oscilloscope. You see that uh, it tries to restart. We can actually trigger on the current so that we see this behavior better. You see for several seconds, there is no activity. It then uh, starts. Sometimes the voltage, which is the 12 volt, uh, you can see the, here the yellow line is the 12 volt line. It uh, ramps, gets almost to 12 volt. Here there is a zoom around the 12 volt, uh, but then uh, it stops uh, uh, almost immediately. So in this way, it is actually much better and much more clear the behavior right now for the for the board. You can see that every several seconds, uh, the ST Energy board uh, tries to restart. Uh, it sees that the power is uh, exceeding the maximum power set on the protection on the OLP protection for the LLC, and uh, at that point uh, it stops. Let's try to re reduce the load and verify that uh, actually it does work. It did work for a little bit uh, earlier. Okay, it was just because the power was still excessive, but not much. And so uh, it did start, but then it stopped. Now it is actually working fine. It is uh, below the 150 watt. That is the maximum. The protection is actually a little higher. As you can see, it tried to restart multiple times until uh, that protection was not triggered anymore, and now the board is working. Let's now try with the latch mode and see how it behaves. I switch off the power supply. I go back to ATE mode. Go to the parameters. Change to latched the OLP. Now, I didn't read back uh, from uh, the device uh, because I already did it earlier, but otherwise you should uh, read uh, from the device. I might not have done it also earlier because uh, I had it already opened uh, in the, uh, so I already had the values that actually were coming from the device. I did write the new configuration uh, to the device, uh, and now I go back to run mode and uh, power on uh, the board again. It is now working at uh, 140 watt, uh, and it is working fine. Let's now exceed uh, the maximum power. Now, it did stop. As you can see, there was an increase on the input current, the red line, and there was a slight decrease uh, of the output voltage because of the overload. Now, even if we wait uh, forever, quote unquote, uh, it will not try to restart. Uh, in this case, uh, the latch protection will uh, uh, keep the device uh, stopped until uh, it is powered off. And in order to power off uh, the ST Energy device, in this case, it means that you need to remove the AC line. Otherwise, uh, it will uh, continue to stay on, to stay powered. Let's switch off the AC line, go back to normal level of output power, switch on again, and now it does restart. So the same behavior, latch versus non-latched, uh, uh, can be set for uh, basically all the protections. Let's now work on the second test related to the burst mode entry threshold. Let's check the configuration right now and then uh, see with uh, the oscilloscope and uh, actual test uh, on the board uh, what uh, is the behavior. So we enter in ATE mode, we open the parameter window. The entry level for the burst mode is defined by the level of the feedback to the LLC. 
So this depends uh, essentially on the uh, actual implementation on the board. So you will need to uh, read more in detail the user manual uh, and also the uh, NVM parameter document uh, to better understand uh, the details of the configuration. But we'll basically test uh, this configuration and uh, then change it and see the uh, different behavior just to give you a feeling of uh, what this means and what is the behavior, different behavior uh, at the level of the device. So the level right now is uh, this 314 uh, digital uh, 767 millivolt uh, on the feedback. So we keep uh, this value for now and we check the behavior uh, on the device. So we go back to run mode. We switch on the board, uh, see that it starts uh, right now. The power consumption is about uh, 14 watt or so, 15 watt. Uh, please do not consider uh, what you see here on the window on the GUI. When you are at uh, low power consumption, uh, uh, there is a significant error uh, on this because uh, this is just uh, say an estimate and it is pretty accurate uh, at higher power, but uh, at very low power uh, is becomes really not very accurate. So, um, Let's try to decrease the current. Uh, right now it's not working in both mode. Uh, you will see the different behavior on the oscilloscope. Uh, so we are now decreasing the current. Uh, it is still in uh, continuous mode. Uh, I am at uh, about eight watt uh, right now. I'm decreasing more uh, and now it enters in uh, both mode. So right now it is about uh, around uh, seven watt. And I can then uh, decrease even more uh, the power, so you see even better the burst mode uh, behavior. Essentially, when it is in uh, burst mode, uh, right now we are around uh, one watt of consumption. When it is in burst mode, uh, uh, the activity of the LLC and the PFC uh, is not continuous. It is uh, only working uh, when it's needed. Basically. Uh, the LSE and also the PFC are uh, um, giving power to the load, uh, to the output capacitor, let's say, uh, for uh, some time, very brief. Uh, and then uh, when it goes above a certain threshold, uh, the voltage threshold, uh, it stops and then it restarts and then stops again. So in this way, even though the output voltage is not... Uh, perfectly stable. It is actually still pretty good. So right now I'm zooming at uh, 0.5 volt per division. Uh, so it is really not much, the, the ripple. It is not uh, perfectly stable. And also the input current is not uh, a sinusoid, but uh, it is uh, very low power. And uh, the burst mode allows to optimize the, quite significantly the uh, efficiency at very low power. So we have seen earlier in the presentation uh, that uh, uh, this device is uh, very efficient at low power and uh, uh, it's super low power. And this is uh, one of the ways uh, that uh, it can achieve uh, that uh, high efficiency. Let's try now to change uh, the configuration of the burst mode and see at what level it will enter in uh, burst mode. I switch out the, the power supply, I'm now Going back to ATE mode, let's see the parameter. Uh, let's change the feedback level to about uh, 282, let's say 688 millivolt. Uh, OK, right into the device. Uh, and now we go back to run mode, switch on again. Let me restart from. Uh, the maximum power that is about uh, 14 watt, uh, 14 or 15 watt. And let's try to decrease uh, slowly. Right now I'm already at uh, uh, around two and a half watt uh, and it is still uh, not in burst mode. So it now decreased uh, the level of power at which uh, it will enter in burst mode. Now the benefit is that uh, you see the current, the input current, uh, and also the voltage are uh, very nice. 
but it is consuming uh, quite a bit of power just because the PFC is switching and also the LSC is switching to deliver uh, very low power to the output. Let's decrease more. Uh, right now we are just below 2 watt and uh, it now entered in uh, uh, burst mode. So you can see that uh, you can select trade-offs, uh, you can uh, define at what uh, level of power uh, you go in this uh, uh, deep power saving mode. Uh, there is uh, some ripple on the output voltage and the input current, let's say, is not uh, perfect, but it, there is a significant advantage in uh, uh, the efficiency of the power supply. In the last test, I'm going to show the uh, parameter uh, area skip. That is another uh, power saving uh, technique uh, that uh, you will fully understand uh, in a moment. Basically, the PFC switching activity is uh, stopped when the AC input voltage is uh, around uh, zero volt. So let's check the configuration right now for this uh, parameter. The configuration right now is zero. Zero means uh, disabled, basically. Let's uh, see the behavior first uh, with uh, the current configuration. Let's uh, switch on now with zero load. Right now we are uh, around uh, seven watt or so. This is about 20 ish watts. And uh, as you can see at both, uh, um, 25, uh, 20 ish watts uh, or uh, 7 watt, uh, the input waveform, uh, the current waveform is the same. Basically, the switching activity is uh, um, going all the time, it is uh, never stopped. Uh, and the only noise uh, that you see is uh, probably where uh, uh, there is maybe some more current uh, that is uh, the one by the PFC. But uh, in any case, you can see also on the uh, graphical user interface uh, here in uh, uh, orange, you can see uh, the value of zero for skip area, regardless uh, of the power level. So now I increase the power level, I do decrease it, uh, and it always remains to zero. You will see later instead that uh, this uh, will change and you will see on the oscilloscope the different behavior. Let's switch off the board and increase the value of the parameter. Let's go to about 512. I do need to write it. And then go back to run mode. Switch on again. Now we'll go to uh, 7 watt. Uh, you can see the different behavior. Uh, uh, basically, on the graphical user interface, um, you see the skip area at level 2 at this point. Uh, and on the oscilloscope, you can see the input current uh, that is, uh, um, is basically 0, is the input capacitor, that, okay, and maybe also the measure that I'm showing. Uh, a um, current value that is different than zero uh, around the zero voltage crossing of the uh, AC uh, line. Uh, there is no activity from the PFC at that point. Uh, then it starts when the voltage is higher, and then it stops when the voltage uh, decreases again. So um, in this way, basically, you can uh, uh, make uh, the PFC work uh, more efficiently because it only switches when uh, there is a higher input voltage. If I increase the current more, the output current, uh, then uh, you can see that uh, it goes to zero on the graphical user interface uh, and it becomes uh, a sinusoid, uh, the uh, input uh, of the um, actual board. Let's try now to increase uh, more the value of that parameter.
let's test 1000. So right now it is actually working at uh, uh, 25 watt uh, roughly. And uh, you can see that uh, now it is in uh, um, area skip, uh, skip area, sorry, mode. And uh, uh, even though I am now working at the power, at the higher power level that I was testing earlier, uh, and uh, with the previous configuration, uh, it was uh, completely out of this uh, mode of operation. While now I increased the level and it is uh, uh, still working area skip. So with this parameter, basically you can select uh, the power level at which uh, uh, you want to use uh, uh, this uh, uh, type of approach to improve uh, uh, the efficiency. Now the drawback uh, is uh, obviously on the THD. Uh, now at very low power, uh, uh, there is no big deal uh, if uh, the input current is distorted, uh, is, is not a sinusoid. Uh, uh, because uh, there is no regulation and actually in general there is no regulation up to 75 watt uh, so depending on your application depending on uh, the regulations for uh, your application you can decide uh, whether to have uh, a nice uh, and clean uh, input current uh, so that it has a nice THD doesn't generate uh, any noise uh, that can impact uh, other applications connected to the line uh, or uh, you can uh, decide to improve uh, the um, efficiency so that uh, uh, you get some uh, uh, benefit from that point of view. Let's in increase now the power more. Uh, so we'll see that uh, it will exit from uh, the uh, skip area mode. Uh, right now we are around uh, 70 watt and uh, you can see that uh, at this point uh, it is completely out of the skip area mode. And you can see the input current that is now again a nice uh, sinusoid following the input voltage. That's it for uh, this video. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, I recommend you to contact uh, your uh, ST technical support. Um, uh, we have uh, several offices uh, around the US. Uh, you can also go on their website uh, and uh, contact us uh, through the online technical support.